Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Ashers and this is... This is Pat O'Sullivan. So I had a very interesting, fun time this weekend. I was supposed to go to uh, Point Pleasant again. Um, okay. But Sunday, it was really gross outside, so I did not get to go. And I had a very hard Sunday because I was really hungover. And <laughs> what'd you what'd you get into? So let's quit talking about Sunday. Let's start talking about Saturday real quick. <laughs> so what happened Saturday, there? Um, which you know, most of you, m- most people here know Anne. Um, but I'll explain Anne. Anne is my um, she is my documentary co-host, and but she is also my Anne's like my lifestyle dom. Like she's she's my dom, but it's not sexual. It can be sexual, but it's not. It usually it's just more of like I don't know, like life choices and things like that it's weird <laughs> i don't know how to explain it <laughs> but anyway so um not just Anne, the place that i film my show at um the secret chamber house of of oddities and artwork um it's where i film i film my show in her basement she's got a full dungeon um she is like a big person in like the um art community here in in dayton ohio well just in ohio really and um she had her three-year anniversary and the shop is located and it's in fairborn ohio on main street and it has a very um famous halloween store like almost the the whole strip is is the halloween store because they have like halloween shops no it's called foys <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh that was a joke <laughs> I mean, i've seen that i've seen that there's one of those by us too <laughs> oh yeah a foys <laughs> no a spirit of halloween uh, anyway i'm sorry like forget that. it keep going i'm there's sorry Foys out there that's i'm like wow they expanded um but they should i mean i gosh if he hasn't yet the guy should he's got like a there's there's specifically a store that's just for haunted houses and there's a store for just regular decorations there's adult costumes kids costumes a candy store so on and so forth and it's like this whole strip in in the middle of the city and her shop is also there on the strip now there's other things too there it's it's cool anyway so every year they uh, in october you know they have this um they have this big halloween festival and it usually goes on all weekend and then she also um we'll hire different performers and artists and things to come and she has her um anniversary for her shop opening because it's only been this year's been three years well covid canceled the annual halloween festival so um but cherish the owner of the shop decided to go ahead first it was like a secret party that she was gonna have and she only had so many people coming and then um it turned into she was able to get approval from the city to have the party as long as she had it outside and so she was able to have it so she had a bunch of performers and things um different shows at different times you know the shop was open it was great so ann comes over and this event starts early it started at like uh started at four and um so i start drinking already and you know but you know before i get there because i can't drink while i'm there so you know we start drinking and we go down there and we had a great time they had um you know there's a group of there's a dance group that do like pole dancing and and stuff like that and it was cool and there's fire dancers and i've got pictures i'll post them eventually um but but it was fun it was really fun to see people especially because this has been like my first event since all of this has happened i haven't really been able to be out at like a public event with all these different artists that i have made social media friends with but have never actually met so it was really fun to you know finally see these people and interact with them and you know of course i just fit right in and it was beautiful and it was great so it it was a good time um that went on until about nine o'clock at which point me and ann were like okay let's go you know buy more alcohol and let's go get really drunk so we went back to my house and we got really drunk and we stayed up i didn't go to bed till like five (laughs) what were you drinking um i was drinking rum and coke that's that's my drink of choice um so i'll you know i'll buy a big old bottle of rum and just but i probably drank like a whole pint to myself at least nice <laughs> and uh everybody else was drinking beer we invited you know a couple people over and it wasn't a huge event or anything it was only like four or five of us but um yeah so this guy that i've been talking to i don't think he listens to the podcast i hope he doesn't listen to the podcast um so what are you talking about we need every listener possible him and (laughs) him and everyone he knows should be listening to the podcast (laughs) just get him tell him you were on the podcast this week um you know we'll see how this goes i have you know i'm honest with everybody so i don't i don't have things to hide um but 
uh he came and hung out at the event with us and then came back to the house or whatever and um so you know i've been talking to this guy adding him to to my harem i guess i've decided i i, I guess it's a, is that is that what it is when you have a group of guy like a group of guys instead of girls is it still a harem yeah or i don't know what i thought there was a word for it but when i tried to look it up there really was there didn't seem to be one and i'm like oh anyway so you know he's he's a new inductee he's <laughs> and uh so he comes over and um another guy comes over that i don't really consider a boyfriend but i have slept with and i think he was expecting to be slept with again but <laughs> my life's so complicated but i already had you know somebody there just the phrasing of that <laughs> he expected to be slept with again <laughs> well and he just That's you know funny. he's very hopeful and and i don't mind sleeping with him it's just he's not he's not my priority and right there's a time and a place yeah and so you don't want white castle every night but there's some, sometimes you want white castle right you know? and i mean we hang out and stuff we're cuddle buddies but we've only slept together the one time because he's got feelings and i don't want to hurt his his feelings i do have a heart believe it or not <laughs> so anyway so my guy fucking passes out he gets so drunk he passes out so i'm not getting laid and but the other guy's there still at my house and like you know it gets really late we all we watched like three movies back to back it was crazy and then uh anyway so i'm you know falling asleep i'm like everybody leave and the one guy is like going to leave and he's like you know i'll leave and, unless you want me to stay and i'm like what the, the other guy's fucking asleep in my bed right now like where are you staying with him in the bed i mean what <laughs> what <laughs> and you know so i kick him out and uh anyway i expect the other guy to leave i don't like people to stay the night with me i don't like that i like my bed to myself yeah that's kind of uh um i mean not not to interrupt but that that's kind of a a, a dick on the table move you know what i mean and i i know girls that used to do that when i used to live with uh i used to live with a bunch of guys and we would have parties all the time and inevitably towards the end of the night one girl would kind of so, you know they'd sneak off and they pass out in your room yeah and, and i mean i'm sorry dude there have been times when i fucking took a bucket of water to that bitch I'm like you get the fuck out of here like i know exactly <laughs> yeah, you what you're did. doing <laughs> you're not you're not clever you need to get the fuck out of here i, I did not choose you well and, okay, and you do so... not you do not get to win by default because <laughs> you fell asleep early you should have taken a fucking nap you knew what was going on well, tonight i mean okay so hold on so i this dude legitimately like at some point okay so i've been I, or they put their purse in your room that's even the worst. i hate that too because don't think i won't lock the door and then go through it <laughs> you're driving home without a license i don't give like, a shit i don't mind like okay somebody's drunk you're like no don't leave you know what i mean don't get in your car and fucking drive off you can stay here like that's not the problem i think this guy legitimately like he was petting my he was on the floor petting my cats and he fell asleep petting the cat so like i, I think he he had to go sleep you know i don't i don't blame him there and everybody was still there it's just well, that. go sleep in the bathtub <laughs> i should have pointed them to my daughter's room like you go sleep <laughs> you get oh no 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 no. that's that's a it's a big no-no <laughs> well what if he gets sick or something and then you gotta well, deal with that that's shit. true too i well then he'd be cleaning that shit up the next day the only thing worse than than pissing in your bed is pissing in a nine-year-old's bed yeah, and i'm talking from that from personal experience that's fair that's fair yeah. but yeah so anyway so he leaves and i'm like okay well i'm i'm gonna sleep on the couch and so i chose to sleep on the couch and and I woke Good up, for you. Oh, yeah, I did. And I woke up the next day. Well, because I, you know, I didn't want to disrupt him. But the poor guy's got a whole life of issues going on right now. He's got a lot of problems. Um, I don't think he sleeps well at, right now in his life. And so I'm like, I'll let him have a big comfy bed for the night. It'll be fine. So I'm on the couch. I woke up. I woke up at like 11. It was really late. I, I'm, I'm on first shift right now with my kid in school. So um, was, that was late for me. And he was still there. And I expected him to not be there, <laughs> but he was still there, um, which is fine. I, I've been co-writing this article about horror movies with somebody else. So it gave me a chance to like sit and like watch the movie and not be disruptive to him. But he like slept until like one o'clock <laughs> and Jesus. I'm like, you know, guy, I had to at least have some type of chance to go do something today. Uh, but, you know, he wakes up, we hang out for a little bit. Meanwhile, the other guy that wanted to stay had left his phone at my house and when he got home he had messaged me on facebook and was like hey i left my phone let me know when i could pick it up i'm like cool he's like well let me know when dude leaves and i'll come pick up my phone i'm like oh, I know. 
you know, I waited and I'm like, well, what if I do drop it off at your house? Right. I'm going to have them drop it off. I, right. Because like, I've still got fucking yesterday's makeup all over my face. You know, I'm a mess. I don't really want to, I haven't eaten anything yet that, you know, Sunday I want to, you know, whatever. Yeah. So guy leaves. I let other guy know, come over, pick up your phone. He comes over, fucking hangs out for three hours. I'm like, dude, I'm not even fucking dressed for the day. It's four o'clock. Like go home. <laughs> like I just want to be left alone at this point. So it was just you know and by that point by the time he left my day was already chalked up to being you know nothing so but whatever the day before was worth it it just sucks being old um when when you party too hard because you can't recover you know as quickly me fucking you know even five years ago i would have been like up and at him and already taken a shower and gotten moving and been dressed for the day and ready to do whatever but i just didn't have it in me so (laughs) well if there's anything to look forward to it's when you are actually old like i am oh, no. stuff like that doesn't even happen anymore i'm 40 like my weekend was completely different but like <laughs> I, I remember weekends like that from my youth yeah. you know i think you need to be, you need to just be direct with people and like throw them the fuck out you know and like i've had i've had chicks spend the night and you wake up banging pots together you gotta go yeah. you gotta go and just keep repeating it and then but uh, you gotta go but hold on don't you want to get you gotta go yeah, well, <laughs> and then just, just get him the fuck out of there and then just nice. shut the door and I'm you like, know ugh. it's i'm like it's not that i don't want to hang out with you it's just that like I live well no you, it's exactly what it is you don't want to hang out with the dude and you knew he was you know he was he was passive aggressively poking around for three hours because he expected like a nip slip or something you know what i mean like saying that like he's hanging out and he's like He's like, man, I'm so disappointed that, you know, dude fucking fell asleep last night and took up the bed. Because we could have hooked up last night, yeah. Well, and it's like, you know, what what makes you think that I would have slept with you? Just Entitlement. <laughs> I slept with you the one time, so now you think it's constant? Anyway. But, you know what, though? I got to, just to, just to kind of hang on that for a second. I that That is one of the more difficult things to navigate when you're talking about a low-impact relationship is we did it once. I mean, this is something that I go through. I, you go through in all different types of relationships where, like, just because you did it once doesn't mean that you can do it whenever you want. Right. Or, to, or just because you're in it, like, let's say you were in a relationship. I mean, you can be married to someone for 30 years, and if, if you grab their tit and they say no, then that fucking ends that. You know right. what I mean? Like, that's just all there is to it. But I think that there's it's kind of for people that are more used to conventional relationships when they get into like a friends with benefits situation or just like a kind of like, you know, uh, we did it just to see what it was like. And I'm glad we scratched that itch and maybe we'll do it again, but it's not going to be an all the time thing. Some people can't handle that level of uncertainty and it makes them very cagey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And they, and they don't know like, what's the protocol? Like, does this mean that we can do it again? Cause we did it once and, so can we do it again now? And you're like, no. And then it's like, well, do you not like me? It's like, no, I like you, but I just don't feel like doing it now. Like, okay. right. I just, I don't want to. <laughs> and that's, that's a yeah. hard thing. That's a hard thing for some people to wrap their head around, and especially if they don't have a lot of other options. Yeah. Because then it's like they're, they're, they're placing their soul, like, you know, their emotional bill on you to pay. Uh, right. And you're like, I'm not going to trying to pay this. I'm not responsible for this yeah. shit. Like, yeah, and I think that's kind of like the biggest issue I have with with that particular person is that for one, his best friend and the guy he works with every single day, somebody he's known for like twenty years, um, is is my boyfriend Shane, and um, and he, you know, always talks about how Shane is very, he's Shane's kind of cocky, and I'll tell you what, Shane is. Shane doesn't understand rejection. Shane doesn't have fear of rejection. He doesn't have to. He's beautiful. And so, you know, he doesn't, he's never really had to navigate that. And, you know, so he doesn't understand it. Whereas like this guy was married, married his high school sweetheart, divorced because of things that were really pretty much out of his control and hasn't really been in a relationship since. And that was a couple of years ago. And so the guy has a lot to learn, um, you know, relationship wise. And it's just, I'm not that person to navigate that shit with. Like, I'm just the casual lay. And, you know, I feel like he wants it to not you know just be that and therefore but look at look at the dude's fucking mo look at his fucking resume he married his high school sweetheart no he doesn't know what a casual lay is right, exactly so <laughs> he married I mean... the fucking the first the first chick that came across his radar like <laughs> well he's got another girl in the group and they kind of 
have a thing going on and she likes him a lot more you know emotionally like i you know i like the guy he's, he's one of my best friends he really is but it's just as far as like a relationship i can't give him what he needs and so he needs to he needs to try to find that somewhere else and you know until but that's what it comes down to you know i should probably just sit down we've never had a talk about any of this i should probably just talk to him and be like listen <laughs> yeah because I, it sounds like he's equating your you know your uh ex, your expansive palette with rejection and when and when you're not in the mood for him he and but it also sounds like there's a little bit of the nice guys finish last entitlement shit that he needs to grow the fuck out of because that i mean that 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 follows immature guys around a lot too yeah and i can't stand that more than anything else because that's just you need to grow the fuck up like i can't say that about him he's a he's a pretty woke individual he just wants to be loved and he wants to love and he's got so much love to give i'm just not the person (laughs) that's right and i but i I guess my whole thing is that like i don't think you must misrepresent yourself so either he's not paying attention to the persona that you're putting forth or he thinks he can change the situation. And both of those tend to be stinking thinking. But right, <clears throat> yeah. What do I know? I, I've never met any of these people. Right. <laughs> They've never been in my kitchen. I don't know who the fuck these people are. I could be completely wrong about everything, but I'm I, probably not. I appreciate the advice. Yeah, that's that's my <laughs> life, guys. It sounds so glamorous. It sounds like it's all sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and it is. So it is. I was gonna say. <laughs> it, it very much is. Um. On a side note, I I, I want to put this out there. Yes, yes, guys. I saw that there was a sighting of Mothman at the O'Hare Airport in Chicago. I did see that. <laughs> I just want to say <laughs> that um, I've had people even like going at each other's throats. Like somebody shared it to like my Facebook page, and they were like, "I just thought I'd share this with you." And I was like, "Oh, thank you." And then like one of my one of my other friends, and these are like my real life friends, was like oh i shared that with you yesterday and you didn't say anything and it's like right because you gotta understand i'm getting the same article multiple times a day (laughs) jesus now i feel bad (laughs) about it fine you know that's that's fine i i appreciate the leads i really 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 do um but you know there i I have no entitlement to have to respond to any of you and you know (laughs) confirm and and give you a pat on the back you know that's (laughs) and and i was worried at first and i was talking to somebody else and i was like you know this has been going on for like a week now. I, you know, I knew as soon as the article came out, I knew about it, you know, and um, it's been going on for so long. And I'm like, you know, how do I nicely say like, thank you, but I've seen this without like hurting anybody's feelings. And I was like, well, I could just do a general thank you. But then like when I just did a general thank you, I still got in trouble. So, <laughs> right. but, you know, here, here is my, my, uh, my overall thank you guys. I, I really do appreciate it, but you know, I I do see it. I don't want this to deter anybody from sending me other things because, you know, you never know. I, I do a lot of research on a lot of different topics. You know, I do this podcast every week, so I'm researching that. If something falls into my radar, I'm doing that. You guys don't even really know about the Sky Dragons that I have going on right now. Sky and- <laughs> Dragon. Yeah, Dios, Dio. The Sky Dragons. It's a whole the other. Fuck are the sky, these Sky Dragons coming out of left field. Oh now. my fucking god, the Sky Dragons. It's just, there's been mysterious noises in the sky going on everywhere. Oh, the, that's been going on forever. I mean, they were trumpets. They called them trumpets a couple of years ago. Mm. Yeah, well, is it, well is it significantly different than that it, it, it is yeah i mean it is different um it's still mysterious noises in the sky and i'm trying to see if like all the even though the noises sound differently if they're the if they're coming from the same source so I, i've been kind of taking that a little more seriously and then people have been sending me st- there was like an incident in texas i call them sky dragons even though i guess all dragons would be in the sky um because in texas there was this weird noise going on and um they had determined that the noise was they say was coming from this old pipe at this place but i'm not convinced because of i'm not gonna get into full detail but a guy went on facebook live and you know was recording while this noise was happening and kind of went outside and was like trying to investigate and find it and during the, the time that this was going on there was also like a thunderstorm going on and every time it would light, it would, like the lightning would go off you could see the shapes and the clouds and they kind of looked like fucking dragons they kind of look like dinosaurs of some sort it was crazy (laughs) so you know i've been kind of looking into that anyway you know so i do i do a lot of research on on many different topics and it's a lot especially because the thing that i'm trying to prove is that 
you know, none of these are so different from the Mothman. They're all actually kind of the same thing, you know? And um, so, you know, you never know when you're going to send me something that, that I don't know about, but, but yes, I, ha I did see the Mothman at the O'Hare airport. He's been there for a very long time. Um, but, but this was a good sighting because it was a, uh, it was a, yeah. I, what I thought was neat was that um, we actually brought up the O'Hare Mothman sightings last week when we were doing the, uh, the uh, Chicago earthquake prophecy episode because part of the um, Chicago earthquake prophecy mentions O'Hare airport, talks about the O'Hare airport yeah. yeah, destruction of O'Hare airport. And uh, I didn't know that there was so many Mothman sightings around O'Hare. And um, you mentioned that last week and I was like, Oh, that's interesting. And then a couple days later, this story broke. I mean, the, this, the article that I sent you uh, is dated October 19th, so yeah. which is yesterday. So I don't know if I don't know if this was making the rounds before then. It was. Yeah, it, okay. it was Tobias that came out with the article originally on the on the Singular Fortean Society. Mm, and because, okay. um, you know, that's his thing. He does the Lake Michigan Mothman stuff. And yeah. um, so he broke that story last week. And that's it might have been why I had mentioned it at the O'Hare airport because uh, I had seen okay, it because okay. everybody sends it to me 50 times a day. So. <laughs> and then. Oh, and here's his original article. Let me hold on. I'm pulling it up right now. October 13th, which would have been. Tuesday. Wow. Which would have. Yeah. A yeah. week ago today. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, I start seeing that. And so everybody, you know, which, which is like I said, it's fine. Everybody sends it. But and then now other people are picking it up. I don't know why this one has suddenly gone viral. It's old news. It really kind of is because he's been at the O'Hare airport for, you know, multiple on multiple occasions. He's, you know, that's one of the most significant places where he's been at since 2016 in Chicago. Well, just off the top of my head, I think the first thing that I would I would ask is, is there any correlation between these sightings and the sightings of the jetpack dude in California? Have you been seeing stories about that? Yes. So, uh, yes, I did want to talk about the jetpack guy real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah the, um, uh, you know, that that is curious. Um, now, he was he's been seen twice. And the last one was where was it in L.A.? Is that right? The last one that I saw. Yeah. But I remember seeing it. He was spotted in other places, too. But at that height, like, how do you how do you know it's a jetpack? So I Well, that's true. How do you know? Well, they I mean. Well, and that was the question I posed was, you know, are we sure that this is a jetpack guy? Because, and I looked it up, I was looking up the, uh, you know, I'm not a jetpack, jetpack expert or anything. I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't know shit about them really. Um, but from my understanding is that they can't really, they can go that high. They can, it's possible, but they can't really like go that high and sustain that high. Um, you know, they, they can go up to about 6,000, uh, what is that? 6,000 6, feet? Is that what it is? In the air. Yeah, convention the conventional right. mechanic the, the jetpacks that we know about. Now, granted, who knows what the fuck else is out there? They they have very limited range, right. and that's why they've never and they've existed. They've been around for a while, right? But it's just there's no practical application to them. You wouldn't use them in combat. Yeah, it's too easy for things to go sideways and you burn off your fucking legs. Well, like and not even just all that. You know, the thing is, is that because because we have such limited technology with them, you know it would be it would be very clear if we were having any type of testing whether it be from a university or you know just private funding or anything if we were having testing of these things you know we would definitely let people know or we wouldn't fly them in like unauthorized you know aerospace mm -hmm. um so you know the fact that you know this was up as high as it was for as long as it was and in an area where it really shouldn't have been in because it, it can cause an accident um it, you know that's very uh that's very um sus to me is that what the kids are saying now sus <laughs> the new word i learned it um for my eight-year-old so <laughs> but yeah um you know that's it is very weird so that's that was my first question was that you know are we sure this is some guy in a jetpack you know how do we know it's not just you know flying humanoids are a thing just right. people flying in the air without wings or anything at all to to sustain them so you know or you know was it wings did they see something on its back you know we need to know these these details but unfortunately right now because it's under investigation from the fbi i don't think we're going to get those details yet mm -hmm. you know because all we have is just that it's a it was a jetpack why why do you think it was a jetpack what made you you know but that but that is curious now the even the o'hare airport setting that happened i think in september even it wasn't even correct yeah. you know it, it wasn't even that recent so um yeah it, you know it's it's but it could be you know again the first jetpack sighting happened in september i believe so 
but that was interesting that was that was some interesting news news of the week so i thought that was uh pretty cool but <laughs> anyway so i guess i don't know if we can go ahead and get into this week's topic um sure it's not really i don't think i have any more updates so you know it's uh it's you know my favorite time of year it's spooky season um actually that's kind of a lie uh it's surprising but i'm 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 a christmas person myself um <laughs> everybody always assumes halloween's my favorite holiday because you know goth girl and all but no it's christmas um <laughs> I, i'm sure it's a little like daunting like it's a lot of it's a lot of pressure to to produce and perform and and come up with something and mm, it can be only because you know i mean it's this is me every day of the year you know so it's like right. it, it's not that much different i mean you know my house isn't super spooky on the regular you know believe it or not i try to at least present in some type of normal way lately i have not been but um <laughs> you know but whatever you know so I, I do the decorating and i do the festivities but like yeah even like coming up with doing like like the witch photo shoot it's like it you know kind of seems like it's for halloween but then again like i could have done that any day of the week because right. i'm a witch you know so yeah. <laughs> uh, you know but um anyway so so we've kind of been trying to do some spookier topics and uh you know we thought that it would be a a good time to get into the uh the famous dog man so I'm I'm pretty excited. Uh, what did you know about the Dog Man before you started researching it for the episode? Absolutely nothing. Um, You'd never you heard know, of it. I had heard of the Beast of Bray Road. Okay. Because that is based out of Wisconsin. Um, it's kind uh, of close-ish to you, isn't it? Yeah, it's southern Wisconsin. It's 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 basically like an hour and a half from here. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Right outside Lake Geneva, right between Lake Geneva and Kenosha, um, and I think it's even Racine County, which I have all three of those areas I know very well for various different reasons. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so the beast of Bray road I had heard about. Um, and, uh, but you know, I, it's, I wasn't familiar with the term dog man. Okay. Um, and I wasn't, I was even less familiar with the distinction between dog men and werewolves. Okay. Right. And a, a great quote that I found online is, uh, the difference is dog men exist and werewolves do not. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. if you google like what's the difference between dogmen and werewolves that comes up and i thought that was that was pretty clever uh, that is, so well, yeah <laughs> yeah i mean um yeah because werewolves that's ridiculous but i i think that uh, with werewolves there it's suggested that there's some type of uh transformation that right a human From being human undergoes and turns into a werewolf or a dog man is just kind of this human wolf hybrid it's always uh, a dog man yeah on the reg you know <laughs> So the dog man um is is most of the time described as being between four anywhere between four feet tall to eight feet tall. Okay. And um <clears throat> what distinguishes it from like a regular, you know, sighting of some type of just canine that we don't know about is that it it walks on two legs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh the story is that it <clears throat> um has a dog head and a human body. Sometimes it's that it is all dog, but has these just kind of humanoid creatures in the face. Um, sometimes it's just the dog walking on two legs. Um, so there are a couple of different variances there. Um, in Michigan, they believed for a long time that the dog man was kind of, you know, definitely more supernatural and that it only appeared um, in years that ended with seven so interesting yeah so every you know not necessarily i guess every i guess every 10 years you know <laughs> it shows up on the seventh year and so um so you know by their account then they would have had dog man you know sightings running rampant in 2017 supposedly uh no that is kind of an older legend um we have dog man here um we have um actually the north american dog man association is that is that the name of the association they are based um oh i'm sorry the north american dog man project is based in ohio um, and actually, in my area specifically, they're making a documentary about the uh, Germantown Dogman. And Germantown, Ohio, um, is a place that is kind of near and dear to my heart, somewhere that I frequented a lot because it has these really creepy roads on it. It's I've kind of told I've told the story on the show before about Dead Man's Road, and we're pretty sure we saw some guy getting buried on it one day, and it's just a creepy fucking area and whatever. And um, but there's supposedly Dogman sightings in that area as well. Um, they have supposed a uh, like the audio clips of of the dog man and, and things like that um 
I guess I should say supposed, alleged is, is the word. <laughs> Um, but it is mostly, you know, yet again, it's it's mostly a, a Midwestern thing. Yeah, it's pretty widespread. I mean, there's Michigan has a, a very strong mythology. I didn't know about Ohio. Yeah. Uh, Wisconsin is the one that I'm more familiar with. Wisconsin's probably um, the most popular. The Beast of Bray Road is probably the most popular, um, a, a, you know, encounter. Our legends here say that in the 1970s, um, the town was terrorized by this, you know, dogman like creature even to the point to where supposedly somebody was beat to death with a two by four by the creature. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, that, yes. And that, that in 1970, like a professional wrestler, like, you know what? I guess so. So what people had ended up, um, it was in uh, defiance, Ohio is where these sightings and they were taking place. I mean, you know, for like a string of events. And then, you know, one of those events, somebody, I, I don't know if they got beat to death or they just got beat up, but like, why would the dog man use a, a two by right. four? That would defeat the whole purpose of being half dog a big, and, <laughs> right, and dog man. So, you know, I don't know, but the consensus was what the, I believe the local paper came up with was that it was most likely somebody in a suit just going around beating people up with wood, I guess. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Right. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, it, it, it <laughs> That's, you know, basically the, Ohio. and then of course we've had, we've had sightings, uh, as recent as I think 2016 was our most recent sighting. What I could see anyway, you know, who knows there's different ways to report these types of things. And so you have to kind of look at different websites and there's different databases. And, but the most recent I saw in Ohio was 2016. And I think it was in Bellbrook, Ohio, which is, that's like five minutes away from me. So I, I almost technically live in Bellbrook. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's a very, it's kind of a personal thing. Of course, I've never seen one, um, you know. So now, not to open a whole other can of worms, but do you make any connection between the dogmen and skinwalkers? Um, yeah, I mean, I could see that. So I don't, you know, I'll be honest, I, I really don't know much about skinwalkers. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't. Um, it's one of those things that is is kind of a lot. Um, but from my understanding, they like shape shift and stuff, don't they? Right. Well, it's human beings that uh, turn into animals, and oh. it, 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 wolves. That's kind of like where the werewolf thing comes like from. But there, <laughs> yeah, but there could there could be other applications too. And okay. uh, the Skinwalker Ranch, which is in Utah, that's that's a big um, UFO hotspot because there's tons of stuff that goes on there. Different but, stuff, right? Tons of different right. stuff, yeah. But but the but the werewolf sightings are kind of um, pro- the most prevalent, and it's kind of how the area got its name, and then other stuff too. So then they look at like, oh, this is an, an anomalous area in general, and there's everything from UFO sightings to skinwalkers, and what's the correlation between the two? And it's just considered like a magical place. Yeah, um, and, well, I think we, that's why I haven't gotten into it is because it is so much. That yeah. I guess I like, I know I'll need to, and, and actually I I would like to do you know an episode on it, but I I think it would definitely be a two parter because yo oh, to do Skinwalker yeah Skin, because yeah. just uh, just the, the the UFO stuff versus the ghost stuff and there's people that live there and there's then the government did like we know that they did some investigations there, right. um but how much and and what they found that's two completely different things, right. um. But just to kind of go back to the dog man uh, skinwalker, thing. skinwalker correlation in general is that, um, you know, wolves, if you look at wolves, wolves are kind of one of those animals that are like dragons where they pop up like all over the place. Right. And, you know, sometimes they're seen as good. Sometimes they're seen as bad. They're evil. Um, but they're always seen as something. Okay. Right. They're always, they're always prevalent in mythology. Right. I agree. And, you know, they can be... Um, uh especially like humanoid shape changing varieties Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and um uh where am i going with this i don't know (laughs) (laughs) just hop in and and, then say something please (laughs) okay so anyway so i um i mean that could definitely (laughs) that could definitely be a possibility um you know skinwalkers are very interesting because it's kind of like you know they could kind of account for almost any any high strangeness incident that we talk about um in general you know and it's kind of like then you go back to like what's the difference between like a skinwalker and a wendigo you know there's not much and um you know are these the same or you know kind of goes back to are these all the same creature and we're just all of them you know and we're just calling them by different names 
you know i don't know i mean i could definitely see where if we had some type of dog man biologically speaking um we could have gigantic dogs walking around that have evolved to to be on two feet but it wouldn't make much sense in nature i guess for them to be bipedal because they're slower that way right well that that was another explanation that i found uh is i think they're called amarox a-m-a-r-o-k's which are uh gigantic wolves from inuit mythology okay previously thought to be extinct but uh especially because you're talking about the northern regions of the united states like you know northern u.s slash canada uh where a lot of these things are spotted um that maybe they're just kind of like pre wolves that we thought were pre uh, uh species of wolves that we previously thought were extinct kind of like the living dinosaur thing except right. not necessarily dinosaurs um that you know that because there have been big just giant wolves in the past dire wolves yeah. you know and that that goes all the way across to europe um but i think what makes dogmen a little bit different than that you also have to account for like you know just inaccurate reporting right, right? like is it that it's a giant wolf or is it that it's legitimately bipedal because if it's bipedal then we're talking about something completely different right, right? It's a different, yeah. but if we're talking about a, a, a three times larger than normal animal okay. that doesn't necessarily suggest a supernatural explanation so that, that kind of stuff occurs in nature all the time yeah true well what about the possibility of it just being um a very a, a very emaciated bear right that i think that what they what they think is that it has mange that's wow. the uh disorder that they attribute to that yep with, with um, the hair, and mange is where they have the hair loss it's like a parasite infection that right again yeah which you know i don't know about enough about bears to, to <laughs> fucking wait on that one <laughs> um but like i think once going once again like i know bears can get up on their two legs and bears can get up and fucking ride a ball around but yeah that's different I feel like that's different. Like, there's a distinction there. Well, you think so? I mean, do you think if you were out in the middle of the night, even, you know, driving down the road or whatever, and you saw a bear standing standing up on its hind legs, it's skinny, you know, it's not thriving very well, it's young, and, and it's got, you know, missing patches of hair, and it turned around and looked at you, it's got that long snout. I mean, you don't think you could mistake a bear for, for being a dog man? No, well, you're probably right. I mean, you know. oh, okay. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm just... You know, that's a po it's a possible explanation. We don't have, you know, especially with it being in Ohio, we have bears in Ohio, but they're not, we don't have like bears to the point to where like it's, it's scary for us to be in the woods. Like we don't have to have that kind of protection, but it's possible for us to have bears. So it's, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. So it's like, so if I saw a bear in Ohio, you know, I would be, you know, we have a, um, we've had a uh, sightings of a bobcat in my neighborhood and to me that's wild i've never seen one you know wow. in person and i had no idea that we even had fucking bobcats you know and apparently we do and and i live in the suburbs and <laughs> so <laughs> you know it's weird so if i saw a bear you know i would definitely be you know confused um you know but human nature is to identify with something that you are already familiar with so if you saw a dog man and you actually saw a legitimate dog man more often than not your mind is going to tell you that you saw a bear because you can explain that so the human condition kind of leads me to believe that there's got to be some type of credibility to this somewhere you know i i'm almost more inclined to go in the opposite direction and say that this is this could probably be one of the easily more easily explainable um not hoaxes but just uh misperceptions i guess okay because you're you're right about the bear thing just a type of and, hysteria maybe you know yeah and i think that like the werewolf mythology is strong and, and, and you can you can like oh but this is dogman it's different like okay yeah. granted so the, the shape-shifting thing let's put that over to the side for a second but you know wolves are uh one of those animals that that the reason every speak the reason every culture has what uses wolves in their mythology is because every culture had to deal with wolves yeah, <laughs> you know it's right. like why does you know i i had I, I did another podcast once um before you way before you before where you were probably still in high school and um i interviewed an archaeologist and this it was an honest to god archaeologist and what she did was um she worked for like Horizon or sprint or something 
and would travel around and before they installed cell phone towers in an area she would do like a site survey to see if there was any burial mounds or anything like that oh, right okay yeah so it was still an archaeologist but not like you know fortune and glory dr jones sure. and fucking peru and shit the boring so, the um, boring stuff of the job that nobody wants to do <laughs> yeah like how, how the how the job actually exists in, right. in, in modern <laughs> days you, you know you work for at&t um and i had her on the show and it was you know we were just having like a conversation doing an interview and i kind of asked her about you know well the, about the great flood and is the great flood real because you have every culture has their own telling of it so it must have happened and her response was no the reason that every culture has a great flood myth is because every early culture sprouted up around water because that's how civilizations work you could use it to travel you could use it to fish you needed to drink the shit it was like it was part a a culture wouldn't survive unless it had access to water so you had all these cultures that built early towns around water and what happens it rains a whole bunch there's flash floods there's tsunamis all kinds of crazy shit happens right so yes at some point every civilization that sprouted up next to a body of water had a time when that body of water rose or flooded into where they lived and that makes perfect sense and it doesn't mean that they're all reporting the same event it means that all those civilizations kind of conducted themselves the same way and dealt with the same problems now I don't necessarily think that that means that there wasn't some kind of unilateral great flood or something in the past. Maybe there was, but I can, I understand that logic and that's something that I try to apply to other things. Right. So when we look at like the, the, the dog man stuff and we say, well, you know, every civilization does hold wolves and kind of, you know, uh, have their own uh, version of, of the dog. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because every civilization had to fucking deal with wolves because they were, they were pack hunters. They, they were a legitimate threat to early man and they were smart and they were smart. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're intelligent creatures. So if you're a human being and you know, you have chickens in your outside your hut and, and the wolves kind of hopped over the fence and snuck in and the chicken coop and ate the shit. You're going to be like, Oh, it was so smart. How to get into the barn. Oh, it must be like a half wolf, half man. Right. Yeah. You know, cause there's okay. so many stupid fucking animals that don't know how to do that kind of shit. Right. But we're talking about a wolf here. So a wolf is of higher intelligence and they're more threatening and they're pack hunters and all this stuff. So it would make sense that human beings and in, in, from if you look at mythology, it's we that's exactly what we did. It would make sense that we would impart so much significance on these creatures, mm-hmm. you know. And once once that happens, once that once that groundwork has been laid, then that kind of mythology evolves over time the same way every other aspect of our culture does. It could. You know? it, it definitely could. I mean, it is hard though, because I I know somebody personally that is a very credible person who has seen a dog man and you know his bitch ass was supposed to be on the show today but he's not and so can you paraphrase their story because i i would totally i as much as i just said all of that yeah. i would love nothing more than to have somebody on and be like no dude i saw one and i'd be like fucking tell me about you know it. and eventually i'm going to get him on the show to talk about it himself but um you know he's can kind you of the reader's digest version or like what's that reader's digest version <laughs> Like what's like, it's kind of like what happened, like where was he, like what happened or what? So I, I don't really, I, okay. So he's told this story a million, a million times, but I'll be honest, I'm a bad friend and I haven't actually like sat down and listened to any of his interviews or anything. Um, but I just, I know that, you know, he was in the woods somewhere. He saw this thing. It saw him and they both parted ways and left. It was about, I think he said it was about six foot. It was covered in fur. It was all dog, you know, no, no humanoid features. It was just one of the bipedal dog you know large dogs walking you know and uh he uh didn't he he felt very uneasy so it was kind of supernatural um and he and he walked away so when he's like you know talking about the story you know and again that's just the very that's just the cliff notes version um the first thing that pops into my head are the hellhounds and you know i kind of want to touch on that for for a minute and i'm not going to talk about it too much and that's kind of more of a big that's a bigger thing in in my witchy community than anything um so a lot of people see these um you know black dogs 
and uh you know they call them hellhounds and you know sometimes depending on you know what you follow and what you believe in they, they can be good or they can be bad some people see them as like familiars or spirit guides um you know some take them as you know some type of negative energy um but you know that is something that just culturally that's that's in a bunch of cultures it's like these 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 black dogs with these glowing red eyes that are you know not of this earth and so it's like is you know could it be that could i mean could that be the, it's not biological at all but it's it's some type of spiritual entity that people are seeing and it's just you know depending on what on what they need but um you know i don't know i mean again you know somebody fucking i just i can't I, I the my biggest gripe with it is that i can't get over the fact that a dog man went out and beat somebody up with a two by four <laughs> well yeah that's one bullshit story that's that sounds like you got drunk and fucked up your neighbor and then blamed it on the dog man. <laughs> and then blamed it on the dog man. I just you know when it comes to that, but whenever there are dog men sightings, there are you know other there's other high strangeness that happens like um cattle mutilation and pets being you know taken and mutilated and things like that. So I mean you know, but then again, you know, I I, I would argue that when you when you talk about cattle mutilation like there is a difference between like cattle mutilation in the ufo sense where like surgical yeah you know there's like surgical scarring there and removal is, yeah. of organ versus like the fucking circle of life right <laughs> like one animal ate a cow feel, like i'm sure right. that shit happens yeah right. I mean, that happens or actually that happens around here a lot where i live and i don't i live in i live right outside of chicago and you know you don't leave your if you have small dogs you do not leave them out yeah. overnight you don't let them out too much i i don't like letting my dog out past sundown because he got sprayed by a skunk once yes you're right we, we I, got I skunks we've you got like to deal with that shit at night coyotes you know? foxes you know it's not very safe to leave your right out at night. and if, if my dog if i left my dog out overnight and i woke up the next morning and he was mauled to death i wouldn't nat necessarily assume go to dog man <laughs> yeah a supernatural um a supernatural culprit i would right. think just a bigger predator in the area killed him and you know the hellhounds thing is real interesting because that is something that i think i never i just you, you know never it's, heard of a black dog no 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 i i have i have um oh my god that's a great you, oh my you god. Just, we'll take it one further if you want to talk about uh mythology have you ever seen the movie black dog no, I was going to ask you if you've ever seen the movie Bones. <laughs> yes, of course. What? I was going to ask the you movie. if you've ever seen the movie Bones with fucking Snoop Dogg in it. <laughs> no, no, no. But let me talk about Black Dog. I've never seen quick. Black Dog, you know. <laughs> Black Dog is with Patrick Swayze. Okay. And um, Patrick Swayze and Meatloaf. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they're truck drivers. It's a truck driver oh. movie. Okay. In the vein of Over the Top. And. Um, came out in 1998 and it tells the story of a trucker and ex-con who was manipulated into transporting illegal arms uh it, the film co-stars popular american singers randy travis and meatloaf i think meatloaf is the bad guy uh, it was produced by Rafaela de laurentis who i'm sure you know dino de laurentis um Oh, he's a huge film producer. Okay. Produced like, uh, I mean, like tons of fucking shit. Army of Darkness is just one of them, but like tons of stuff. And um, Charles S. Dutton's in it. So is it a comedy or is it? <laughs> no, it's like an action. It's like a real shitty hillbilly action movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Patrick Patrick Swayze is a truck driver, but there's the there's the 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 mythos of the black dog, oh. and basically, if you've been driving for too long as a truck driver you'll see the black dog right before you wreck your truck oh right that's a thing though isn't it yeah it is okay. so like so like the whole thing um you know based off of that <laughs> it's, yeah it, it, the, so patrick swayze is a truck driver who's just been released from jail for vehicular manslaughter for accidentally hitting and killing a motorist and his passenger on the side of the road during a trip in which he experienced a black dog hallucination brought on by exhaustion so this is like it's kind of like an omen for truck drivers and it's supposed to be like and i mean i i, I guess i should ask truck drivers because i do know a couple but like it's supposed to be like 
truck driver lore is like watch out for the black dog when you're driving and yeah. you see the black dog it means something bad's about to happen and i just know that like in the climax of the movie meatloaf is the bad guy and right before uh meatloaf like there's like a battle on fucking trucks or whatever <laughs> and right before meatloaf like crashes his truck and dies like he sees the black dog and then boom he dies um <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> all right yeah, so, i guess black dog is like this episode's mr belvedere rant but like <laughs> don't, don't start on fucking mr belvedere again, but, but it's seriously black dog it's 89 minutes long uh check it out is it is it worth checking yes out? it's worth it's definitely <laughs> worth checking out it is definitely worth checking out wow okay yeah all right. well i was talking about the the snoop dog movie bones and this so guy, let me look that up What's this that guy about? dies snoop dog dies and um like somebody i think somebody killed him he's like a drug dealer and it's like he lives in like the ghetto and but then he like comes back to life to like get his revenge on the people that have wronged him and um sometimes he takes the form of a dog or maybe he had to take the form of a dog before he could become snoop dog I, Ooh. You know, it was weird it, it wasn't I this sounds good i don't remember it being a bad movie i, I haven't seen it i you know i'll be honest i haven't seen it since it came out <laughs> he, so it was directed by uh ernest dickerson who is uh spike lee cinematographer okay. stars snoop dog yeah. pam greer yeah clifton powell um new line cinema 2001 96 minutes it's got some really cool stuff. came out october 26 2001 so yeah. i'm sure we were all you know our heads were in other places right now right but, yes but, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah it's been a long time since I've seen, maybe i'll check it out again because of this conversation but yeah like i just remember like i said like this dog like i don't know like puking maggots all over somebody or something oh, I, shit. Was, I, this sounds like something i watched with my kid this sounds like a good one it was a it was a horror movie yeah i mean it was you know but snoop dog bones if you haven't watched it i mean fuck it watch it i, I don't know if it's good i can't t- i can't I remember <laughs> can we can we go for the trifecta of uh dog horror movie recommendations uh i'd have to say that that and this isn't necessarily supernatural it's more sci-fi but it's still it's it's the apex of the killer dog genre man's best friend i haven't seen that one holy shit is that, a that that is it's it's beyond I, it's legitimately a fucking good movie okay um 1993 uh ali sheedy's in it lance hedrickson um if you ever see the movie friday yeah. it's the it's the, the uh craig's dad is watching it oh yeah yeah, where, yeah. he's dog's gonna uh, that dog's gonna bite my ass mr postman yeah so it's like it's like a a dog that is um genetically altered to like like fight like alongside cops or something right and it escapes and ali sheedy who's like the the weird girl from the breakfast club she adopts it and they're like best friends and but she's got like you know she like a guy tries to mug her and the dog like eats him and she's got an abusive boyfriend who's a piece of shit and like um it pisses acid it's like but it's 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 one of the it's 1993 it's 87 minutes long so it's over before it starts but it's super short it's super entertaining and it's like you don't see movies that's new line cinema and it's like back when like they would make kind of like mid-budget horror movies genre movies you know what I mean? Where that wasn't a complete waste of money. Where it's like, yeah, we'll spend seven million dollars on a, a movie about a killer dog, and you know, we'll put Lance Hendrickson in it and whatever. And uh, it's totally worth checking out. Uh, Halloween <laughs> Halloween recommendations, but I will I will watch Bones this weekend for sure. Uh, yeah, watch Bones, watch Bones, and watch uh, Man's Best Friend, and then after Halloween, go back and watch uh, Black Dog. <laughs> And Cujo, we'll and throw that out there too. Cujo, so, you know what? Cujo's the classic. Well, that's, we all know that one, so give it a watch. Cujo for me is way too long. I, you know, I just Cujo. Yeah, well, don't read. Have you ever read the book before? No. The kid dies in the book. It's a that's a it's a terrible book for parents to read. It's it's, <laughs> it's if you're I'm t- <laughs> okay. don't don't do it because that kid dies two thirds of the way through and. Oh. That's it's funny. fucking from dehydration too which is like a shitty way to see your kid go wow i, didn't I know that. it's i mean it's stephen king it's like oh it's like cokehead stephen king it's like good yeah. stephen king. oh yeah that yeah that's true <laughs> you know <laughs> anyway back to dog man okay um so <laughs> well, hellhounds. we were doing hellhounds we were doing hellhounds. hellhounds um, yes yeah they're like uh you know they're just um you know again they're a big um 
like I see I, I see a lot of people in my community reference them a lot um yeah that's kind of what I wanted to come back to is that like there. yeah so that's something that actually um that that pops up in in your travels or whatever however you want to phrase it in my travels and in my sex drugs and rock and roll life <laughs> and the and your left-handed path yeah <laughs> right it is um yeah it's you know they're um you know just the term hellhound in general is it, it's such a general thing that you know again it's one of those things that like every culture has some type of something with this and you know but but the descriptions are basically the same they're typically like you know black shadowy figures with these glowing red eyes and and whatever um in my community a lot of people like i said they will see them whenever they they are getting into um like shadow work and shadow work um is when you basically like face your demons and like the things that you don't like about yourself or um, things that like your old soul needs to, you know, has never confronted and needs to work on from, you know, generations and generations of you traveling around. And, um, you know, but they'll usually like, they'll see them typically and they'll be, um, they'll lead them somewhere or, you know, help them kind of figure out what's going on. You know, I, I've never had an experience like that. Um, personally, I, you know, I've, I've had kind of, you know, I have kind of these weird experiences with animals a lot. Um, but but never with a supernatural animal so <laughs> well, that's what kind of dovetailing it back to the skinwalker stuff that's kind of where th- where that comes from is that um human beings taking on animal form or there being um animals taking like their their familiars you know what i mean right um and it's interesting to think that the werewolves like you know if you come across a a werewolf it would seem to be kind of a a random event you know but when you tie it into the hellhound mythology it makes it seem like it's a more personal experience right you know you know what i mean like that that creature kind of appeared for you or that it's there for you specific or you did something to draw them out right well and so that's kind of what i mean so you know when i talk about my friend with with the credible sighting um you know, the fact that he had a very, you know, he had real emotions involved instead of just, it wasn't just, you know, fear, the basic fear that you're going to get from seeing something that you can't oh, sure. explain, yeah. you know, it, it was more than that. And so, um, you know, that's the only reason why, because I'm generally pretty, you know, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm pretty dismissive about dog man because I just, oh. well, biologically, it doesn't make any sense to me okay no i believe in like giant you know giant dogs or undiscovered species of canine that we just don't know about um you know per- maybe particularly large coyotes or wolves or like a coyote wolf hybrid um or whatever but i've never really thought that a dog man it just doesn't bigfoot makes sense you know what i mean bigfoot would be a direct link to us it makes sense why it walks on two legs it, it makes sense a dog does not we can't breed with dogs <laughs> can't you know so for it to not for lack of trying right (laughs) what is this pat west virginia um (laughs) that's probably pretty plenty of dog man down there is actually point pleasant they'll tell you all about it they have a dog man down there too so it's like uh, really yes yeah that they do it's um uh another actually another guy we were there at the festival um last year uh we interviewed another youtuber um his name is bigfoot bob and uh he he has his bigfoot bob channel and then he has another it's called the uh uh spectral wolf pack supposedly he's seen a dog man down there he says and um you know in point pleasant but yeah they, they've they got a dog man down there too um so you know i don't you know i don't know i, I guess in my mind and my study and, and kind of what i believe in now um, this has pretty much been I, this has probably been the first time that I've ever you know kind of really questioned it again because I me mean, a year ago is different from me now because I've learned so much mm. you know that that me a year ago totally dismissive of the idea me now well then I'm like well of course there's a fucking dog man in Point Pleasant you know and then like I said when we talk about having some type of supernatural event like you know feelings involved and and then it's something I've run into otherwise it's like well you know maybe there is something to this without it being it doesn't have to be biological in our in our, in our view of of what biological would be it doesn't have to be third dimensional i guess is what i mean <laughs> mm-hmm. so you're more inclined to believe in hellhounds than dogmen 
I'm more inclined to believe that they would be the same thing if they existed at all. If either. Oh, you think they're the same thing? Yeah, I would think that they'd be the same thing. Yeah, they would uh, look appear in a different way. Yeah, looking across the uh, this to bring it back to Skinwalkers just for a second. Something that always makes my bullshit detector go off is uh, this article about Skinwalkers. And it says, uh, skinwalkers are described as being mostly animalistic physically, even when they are in human form. And they are reportedly near impossible to kill, except with a bullet or knife dipped in white ash. Well, let me tell you something. A bullet or a knife are going to kill mostly anything. <laughs> Just you know, it it's like I, it's something that always like struck me about the vampires. Is like you can only kill them with a stake through the heart. Like you kill anything with a stake through right. the heart. You know? <laughs> like what the die. fuck? Like how do you know if it's overkill at that point? Like you can say the same thing about grandmas. Grandmas can only be killed with a stake through the heart. If you put a stake through a grandma's heart, then she'll die. Well. <laughs> Can we back it up a little bit first and can we try more conventional methods first and then work our way up through the stake through the heart? It's like the fact that they're like, you can kill them with a bullet and knife, but it has to be dipped in white edge. Like, I guess we might as well dot all the I's and cross well, like, all the T's. Who figured and... that out? Like what? Like, it's just, I mean, like. They had one tied to a tree and just like was dipping brown ash. Right. Yeah. And, and, that, and brown ash didn't work. So it had to be white ash. I mean, what, you know, what, what happened? How did you get to that point to discover that that was how they die? <laughs> right. It's like, motherfucker, I'm Irish. I understand, like, dr- like, <laughs> fucking, you know, overblown, dramatic bullshit storytelling better than anybody. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's an impressive little detail. But, yeah, I think we can, I think if we just stick with the bolt and the knife, we'll probably fuck it up, too. You know? <laughs> that's like when, when uh, not to get into it, but I, I was in uh, the vicinity of um, some dogmen sightings recently. We've been working on this show for a couple weeks. So I had I there was an uh, an opportunity for me to be in the vicinity of one of the more recent sightings, and uh, I chose to uh, go into the situation armed. And I was thinking to myself, like, well, don't I need silver bullets? And it's like, no, I think hollow points will probably be fine. <laughs> At the very least, it gives you time to run away. I mean, <laughs> right? Like I'll at least d- dismember it. Like I don't know if I necessarily need. Although it did make me, it, it did make me think. Like I need to figure out how to get silver bullets because it's ridiculous that I would have a gun and just not have silver bullets. Because of course, that's true. Like, I'm not is so I need... important when it comes to killing. <laughs> right. Like I'm not saying I need a ton of them, but at least you know, a magazine or two full. But. uh yeah it's like i don't think i need silver bullets to go hunting the fucking dog man i think the hollow points will probably <laughs> take care of it yeah that's true well right and then it's like you know if it's not something that's like physical anyway then then really doesn't fucking matter so <laughs> you're just screwed i don't know you know like i said i think that if it's if it is something that exists and it would have to be kind of this it would have to be the same thing as like these these hellhounds i think that it would present itself in a different way to jar you more i think if it is as some type of spiritual journey like um if it did end up presenting to you as like a half humanoid half dog walking on two legs that would be so that you would recognize oh shit i need to pay attention <laughs> and make you question other things you know whereas if you just see you know a weird black dog in the woods somewhere then you are i mean you're more keen to be like eh, unless you're paying attention to stuff like that you know you just be like oh it's just some weird black dog in the woods but you know again i I don't i don't know there's not i don't feel like there's a big history around it i could only really find the dog man and how it's described as far back as like the 1880s it's pretty new Mm. and i just don't know if you know again if there's anything to that but but then again we have other things like we have the um what is it the crosswick monster here and it was only cited like one time but it was cited by an entire town and you know and it was like so long ago but it's like because it was cited by the whole town i mean it's got to be real right i don't know but it was only seen the one time so i I don't know if history is really that important i don't know if just the culture shifted and when it did you know they decided that this thing of course you know especially if the uh if the michigan legends are true if it only comes you know every 10 years on the seventh year then I mean, gosh, 10 years is a long time in the 1800s, you know, <laughs> so yeah. big advances being made then. So, you know, maybe somewhere it shifted and, you know, I'm not sure entirely. Um, 
you know, I just, I don't feel like I have enough to go off of to make any type of informed decision on whether or not I think it's real. Um, I don't know, Pat, what do you think? I think there are several websites that sell silver nine millimeter bullets, (laughs) (laughs) which is fucking awesome. Did you find any yet? (laughs) Yes. Oh my God. Are they expensive? They're sold out at a lot of places. Um, (laughs) Yeah, you're yeah i'm sure well ammo in general is very hard to get right now oh that's true that's true. yeah it's like a lot of places um won't even sell you range ammo because like there's i don't want to get into all this shit sure. but like um yeah it's uh in general it's kind of hard to get to right now but um there's pl- i'm sure if i did some digging which i won't do right now uh i could find some place that's still selling them but uh yeah dude you can buy silver bullets that's fucking crazy <laughs> I mean, I'm not surprised know. you can buy silver bullets. I'm just more surprised. I wonder if they're going to, I'd like, if we were, if we didn't have an ammo shortage going on right now, we, I guess it's not really a shortage, but you know, if we didn't have that going on right now, would they still be sold out? That's the question. Are, are there, are there people, enough people out there? Is there a high enough demand for silver bullets that, that they're constantly in, in that high of demand? Well, one of the one, so one of the websites is Minuteman Ammunition. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have something called their werewolf defense line. <laughs> and it has uh the, the different calibers and i am just to read you the first line of the um the the product description at minimum ammo we take werewolf defense very seriously <laughs> wow <laughs> we offer live ammo loaded with 99.9 percent silver pure silver projectiles the solid silver projectiles are made blah, 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 blah. uh the, all werewolf defense ammo is fully functional live ammo silver projectiles stay intact and function similarly to a solid copper projectile so they're not hollow points they're basically it's like range ammo uh which will fuck you up and uh and it's silver there's they're wow that's insane but it's but they say specifically it's for werewolf hunting yeah it's werewolf defense line <laughs> oh my gosh you guys well i think that dog man is like the next moth man I, I think it's becoming more popular uh by the day like i said the that group the north american dog man project um, they, have, they have a whole website it's north american dogman project.com and <laughs> they you know they're making a, do- a whole documentary about this dog man and i've seen that group for a couple of years because again i'm very familiar with that area and i've heard that there's a dog man down there and i don't know i used to drive down those roads every single night i've never seen one you know. yeah my my needle kind of has to go towards more towards bullshit with this. I mean, trust me, I am werewolves are probably like my favorite of the universal monsters. Yeah, they're I mean, I, cool. I, yeah. I literally made a werewolf movie. It was one of the first movies I ever made. Um, that was uh, played at Troma. Um, what's Troma Dance? Two thousand fifteen or so. Oh, really? Your first movie was played at Troma Dance? Oh, uh, actually, more or less. Yeah. Well, it was a short film, but yeah, space werewolf um space and, right well because it's always a full moon in outer space you know? <laughs> um have I you not seen that we have to watch this halloween, Jesus, halloween i can't believe we're nine episodes in and i just said the word fucking space werewolf that yeah right <laughs> um jesus yeah it's it's uh it's pretty good but yeah um so yeah i'm, I'm a big fan of the world's mythology but at the same time i don't think i don't think they're real like i, I think it's 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 the interesting story but i don't think there's people out there that are changing and i think that it's probably a biological explanation more than anything like you said the mange or the bears that are losing their hair stand you know something like that that's more likely i think so too i mean like i said biologically it just doesn't make any sense why they would even exist um you know that just doesn't you know if they do exist it would have to be something something else (laughs) you know that we just don't understand um but i don't think that as a as an actual animal or you know walking around our woods I just, I don't, I don't buy that. There was a, um, there was a video going around and this was kind of my first experience. And maybe this is why I'm so jaded about the dog man. This was like my first real dog man experience. And it was called the, um, maybe the Gimlin footage. Um, and it was, I should have looked this up before this episode. It was, um, just this weird video on YouTube. And it was like this kind of dog like thing in the woods. And it's kind of, it wasn't the Gimlin footage. I'm thinking of the Patterson Gimlin footage. The, it starts with the gate, maybe the Gable film. That's what it was. The Gable film. And it has this like dog thing that's kind of like pacing back and forth. And then it like charges at the cameraman. And then there's like 
even extended footage where <clears throat> you see that cameraman later and like quote unquote crime scene footage and he's like cutting he's like severed in half and there's like police and stuff and it, i mean it looked really believable um until somebody came out and admitted that it was a fake it was like one yeah, of those early it's copyrighted internet. by mind stage productions right so it was like one of those early kind of found footage internet deals you know kind of one of an early internet mystery and it was like oh i found this in my attic and you know what is that yeah and uh you know so but you know when it first came out it took a while for the truth to come out for it and you know i was sold on it i was like wow this is great what is this and 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 it was fake and you know it hurt my feelings so i i think <laughs> <laughs> it was just the basics of it i was sad that it was not real and that somebody would make it up so i you know i think that that's why i you know again i have some type of bias maybe and maybe i'm jaded by the dog man and it's like you know that was my again that was one of my first experiences with a dog the dog man and so i just i don't know it's it's really hard to believe in it um you know but maybe one day we'll have we'll have dude on the show and we can you know question him and and see what he thinks because he's taken this and kind of he's kind of taken this dog man sighting and has molded his entire career around it so he's really into it um you know so he's you know maybe he's got other stories you know there's not everything's on the internet surprisingly uh, believe it or not yeah i would be interested to to find out kind of where he was at and the the, the correlating data like what's 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 like the background and like the day like what were you up to what was going on in your life right you know what i mean like is there is there potentially some, is there a chance it was there for you like or is it something that you just stumbled across like literally like a cryptid that would like existed in nature that you stumbled across right you know? right and different things so i mean i'm hoping you know everybody put your pleas in um you know i think he's willing to work with us i just think right now it's halloween and <laughs> everybody's reaching for us everyone wants to talk to him yeah I guess. you know right and so it's you know it could, it could be a tough time but you know i i would be curious to do it again and if anybody else has dog man sightings and you know if you guys fuck man if you guys have any sightings and and you would like to come on the show let us know um sure more than happy yeah. to talk to you about you know whatever it is that that ails you you know that's 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 the business as much as i say i you know i don't believe in certain things it doesn't mean that i'm so close-minded that i wouldn't take your story seriously um you know that's right one thing that I definitely, you know, I try to believe and I try to operate on a 1% possibility. If there's a 1% chance it exists, then, you know, it might. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. Like if you're legitimately schizophrenic, we won't have you on because for your own safe, but I, for your own protection, because we don't want to humiliate you. But um, yeah, I mean, if there's, uh, you know, if you got a sighting or you have something you want to talk about, we have the capability to have guests on. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, I don't mind it just being the two of us, but I mean, I could add a third or fourth person very easily and. Yeah, yeah, yeah i mean i'm you know that's that's one thing i'm always curious to see and i've gotten you know when i was putting it out and i need to go back to doing it i was like kind of vetting people in for different situations and just their their high strangeness and stuff and i've got a lot of yeah. interesting stuff well that's how i ended up stumbling upon my sky dragons um <laughs> you know and and i you know people will still send me stuff but i guess i haven't really advertised in a while maybe i'll get back to doing that and you know that'll that'll help and we can kind of talk to some other uh weirdos and make some some bigger discoveries so, <laughs> you might see a breakthrough on the show at some point you know who knows um and, you know but other than that you got any other uh opinions on the dog man uh i started off thinking he was this was more real than i ended up leaving the show thinking so <laughs> you you uh you talked me out of it okay well good for you <laughs> all right then guys well we will see you next wednesday